What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodyMe.com and in this video, we're going to learn how to use the mouse for our games with Pygame and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to learn how to use the mouse for our games in Pygame. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodyMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we set up this little simple game with a dot, and we learned how to move this thing around on the screen using the arrow keys on our keyboard, which is fine. You may want to do that, but it's much better to use our mouse and just be able to drag it around. And that's what we're going to learn how to do in this video. So let's head over to Rakuta. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pi game series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file here called mouse underscore game.py. And this is the code we ended up with at the end of the video in last week's video. So if you didn't see that, check the playlist. And you can see down here, we've got this section where our keys do things, right? So now we want to use the mouse. Woohoo! All right. Okay, when it comes to the mouse, there's basically three events. And remember, events are just like they sound. They're events when something happens. And the three mouse events are mouse button down, mouse button up, and mouse motion. And you can imagine what these things are. Mouse button down is when you press the button on your mouse. Mouse button up is when you let the button off. And mouse motion is when you move the mouse around. Now, inside of those, there are a lot of different little things you can play with, but that's the gist of it. So let's just come in here and build this out. Let's create an if statement. Let's say if event dot type equals pygame dot mouse button down. And you can expect what that is. It's pressing the mouse button down, you know, very complicated. And let's create a variable called position. And this is going to be pygame dot mouse dot get underscore position. And this will get the position of the mouse. So let's just go ahead and print this out and see what's going on here. Now, likewise, we can do the same thing. Let's just copy all of this and paste it again. But instead of mouse button down, let's go mouse button up. And this all has to be capitalized. I know it's kind of annoying. It's like it's screaming at you, but eh, whatever. Uh, and here, let's type a uh, print pos, pos, position, same thing here. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to see if this is working right. So I'm in my C slash games directory. I have my virtual environment turned on. And let's run Python mouse underscore underscore game dot pi. And when we do, if I come over here and click on down and then let it up and then exit out of here, you see Oh, it's printing a whole lot of stuff. So here we're getting the basically the X and the Y position of the mouse. So that's interesting. So we can do stuff with that, right? Remember, we have this player position X and player position Y. Well, if we know where the position of the mouse is and we want to move our little circle to that spot, we can easily do that. So let's come down here and let's say move the circle. So we can just grab this from the last video here and paste it a couple of times. And we want X, we want to set that equal to, well, we've got this POS. So let's call POS. But remember, there's two things an X and a Y. So the first one is zero. And the second one POS of one is the Y position. So if we save this, come back over here, and run this guy again. Now, if I come over here and click, boom, it moves. If I come back over here and click again, it moves. And I'm just doing the press down. Uh, and when I press up, obviously nothing happens. You could have it do something if you wanted to, when you let up. I don't know if you wanted to. And we're still printing out this stuff. We need to get rid of that because that's annoying. Uh, but you get the idea. So here, when we let the mouse button up, uh, what can we do here to make this interesting? Let's grab this thing right here. And... Let's just change the color of our little circle to, I don't know, red or something. So when the mouse button goes up, <laughs> it turns red. I don't know. Let's clear the screen and run this guy. So if I press here, I'm still holding it when I let it up. Oh, it turns red real quickly and then it disappears because it's an event that happens once. And once that next second goes, that event is gone. So again, it's kind of interesting. Think if you've got like a ship or something and when you press your button, it fires, you know, it might want to want to change the color to show it's firing or something. I don't know. Uh, but you can see, yeah, 
at least it's doing something and kind of interesting. So that's pressing the mouse. One more thing I'll sort of mention here, that's kind of important. When we press the mouse down, let's print out just the event, right? So if we save this, run it, bring this over here, and I'm just gonna click it once and then close it. You can see, oh, it's printing out all kinds of stuff. So this is the actual event, and you can see here's the position, 120 by 94. And here's the other thing that we really gotta kinda pay attention to, button one. Now that signifies I'm clicking the left mouse button on my mouse. You know, sometimes mouse, mouses, mice have two buttons, sometimes they have one button, if you're on Apple. Uh, sometimes they have three buttons, sometimes they have, you know, the little wheel thing. So this button one signifies which button you're pressing, right? And this touch false, window none, we don't really care about that. So if we run this again, and instead of pressing the left button, I press the right button, and we close this, now it says button three. So button one and button three, button one is the left button, button three is the right. If we run this thing again, and I press them both at the same time, uh, well, it's not doing anything, but that's definitely a different thing. Do it a couple times and see if we can see. Now it still says one and three, but I think that's two. I will play around with it and see. But anyway, just sort of keep that in mind. So that's mouse button down and mouse button up. What if we want a mouse button motion? So oh, that's the phone one, right? So let's say motion. So let's go if event.type equals, oh, let me scroll down here so we can see this better. All right, there we go. Let's go pygame dot mouse motion. Same thing, we wanna copy the position of that mouse at any given time, right? And we can just come back up here if we want and copy these guys. Say move the circle. Save this, run it, see what this does. So here, as soon as I bring my mouse into the frame here, into the box, it immediately attaches and it's just, it's moving it around everywhere. And if I click well, it changes color, right? But it's still sort of attached to the mouse. And if I go off the thing, it just sort of is there. If I bring my mouse around to the bottom and come up, oh, it pops back over, right? So, okay, maybe you want that, but maybe you only want to drag this thing around after you click the button or while you're holding your button down. How do you deal with that? Well, that's definitely interesting and we're going to look at that right now. So I'm just going to kind of comment all this stuff out. Actually, Let's comment all of this out. There we go. And let's come up here. And we don't actually have to run logic to get the event type. We can just call a function to see if our mouse button has been pressed. So when the mouse button is pressed, we want to do something, drag the thing around the screen. So let's go if pygame.mouse.get underscore pressed. If that is true, then we want to do something. And what we want to do is grab the position of the mouse paste that in there. And now inside of here, we want to run an if statement and say, hey, if event.type equals that same pygame.mousemotion, then, well, maybe we want to put this inside the if statement, I don't know. And let's just copy these guys and paste them in. And let me just comment, check to see if mouse has been pressed. And here, let's say, move the circle. All right, so looking at this, everything looks pretty good, except this right here. Remember when we looked at the event, it designated which button we pressed, the first, second, third, zeroth, whatever. So I want my left mouse button, and on this particular mouse, that's the zeroth item here. Uh, we can check this if we want. It's a little different than the event. In fact, let's do that real quick. Let's just... Let's just print out this and see what it's actually returning. This is gonna be interesting. Let's head back over here. Let's clear the screen and run this guy. And you can see this is still wonky, but if I hit my left mouse button once and then my right mouse button once and we close this, we could see false, false, false. It's a tuple with three things, which is different than the event. The event, and you can see, here's where I hit my right mouse button and here's where I hit my left mouse button. So this is a tuple with three things. And the left mouse button is the first thing, true. 
The right mouse button is the last thing. That would be zero, one, the two, the two thing. Remember, tuples start with zero. So this is zero, one, two. So if we want the left mouse button, we have to look to see if the zeroth item in this tuple is true. So head back over here and let's get rid of this. So to do that, we just index this on the zeroth item. This is the same as saying equals true, but you can leave off the equals true and it will still check to see if it's true. So, all right, let's go ahead and save this. And that looks good. Head back over here. Let's run this guy. Now, when I move my mouse around, nothing happens until I click my button. So I'm going to go over here and click it just once. Boom. There it is. I let the mouse button off. You have to hold down the mouse button. So if I do this and drag around, it, it drags around. The second I let the mouse button off, boom, right there, it no longer drags. If I click again, boom, there it goes. Very cool. Now, if I hit my right mouse button, I'm clicking it like crazy right now, nothing happens. If you want the right mouse button, remember that's the two-th item, right? So let's save this, run it. Now, if I hit my left mouse button over here, nothing happens. If I hit my right mouse button, boom, there it is. I'm holding it down. I can drag. As soon as I let it off, up, it goes away. Now, what about the one-th item? Let's see. So if we save this, I believe that's when you hold both mouse buttons down. So I'm going to hold them both down. No. Oh, <laughs> this is the, my mouse has a scroll wheel on it. I don't know if you could see that little scrolly wheely thing. If I hold that down, there we go. And then drag, it does it. So weird. Now every mouse is going to be different. So you're just going to have to kind of mess around with this to see your mouse numbers, but very cool. So that's basically how to use the mouse. Again, we're getting the player position from the stuff we did in the last video. Depending on what you want to do, you might use this get pressed function, or you might just run an if statement to see if the event type is the mouse button down or the mouse button up or the mouse motion. It really just depends on what you're doing. And uh, very cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.